Hello, everybody, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Hello, it's I'm new. Listening. Hello, it's brand new. I'm listening. Yeah. Listening, listening, listening. Hello, everybody. Body, body, body. You are here with the podcast. Cast, cast, cast. And you can go and suck a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry if I offended you. I mean, it's okay if you want to go and suck a dick. No, I told the audience to suck a dick, which is not nice. Maybe they want to. That's true. If you want to suck a dick, <laughs> no judgment here. Many six six had been ducked here. <laughs> Many six have been ducked. That sounds like some like old school method of healing. Like a sick person is getting ducked, <laughs> and they just like place a healing duck no, on you. And <laughs> not one ten ducks. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on what you have. <laughs> oh, this is this this ailment needs ten ducks. <laughs> get, this one only needs three and a half. <laughs> get me, get me the duck master fast, or this Doctor pers- Duck. <laughs> this, <laughs> fast, get me the duck so this person will pass. <laughs> Hello, duck master. I need ten ducks, <laughs> ten of your best ducks, and three and a half for this guy. I don't know how to do the half. You figure it out. Just like a baby duck. Oh. I thought they might cut it in half. No. (laughs) There you go. You have three and a half ducks here. (laughs) Sure, it's three and a half. It looks more like three and a third. Okay, everybody. That's that's it. That's the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So um, let's just quickly give an overview where we are right now, what we're doing, and how <laughs> life's moving on. No, um, so summer is coming along, and we thought that we might put out like a summer series, but we have no clue what that could be yet. So bear with us. If you have ideas, yeah, let us know. Some sort of summer themed series where it's that will not all happen. about summer. It will not happen, but yeah, sure. Tell us all your ideas. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but we have at least a couple of fun episodes uh, in the pipeline until we might do like a summer series or, and that would be the worst case for you and the best case for us. We just stop uploading for a month. A little summer break, but I don't think we'll do that. No, we probably won't do that. So today, what are we talking about today? We're talking about finding like how, I mean, how to is not really how, but no, I don't it's know. not really like just finding your, your passion or, you know, I don't know how to, how did you phrase it? You phrased it better. I mean, I don't, I don't like the word true calling because one it's person. technically two words. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> the phrase true calling, but, but. Because technically, a person can have multiple true callings, mm-hmm. and so that's that's I don't like that. But I don't know. I thought we could talk about from our perspective um, how we found something that we really like doing. Mm-hmm. Um, not to say that that could change um, at some point, or will change, or won't change, or is going to. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that was the idea. Because um, I don't know. It's I don't know how it is these days with younger generations. I assume it's it's even worse now with the internet being there and with all the opportunities and with so many new f- things created almost mm. yearly or monthly. That was already for us so difficult in, you know, at least for me. Yeah. At like 19 when people are trying to ask you at 19 years old, what do you want to do with your life? And you're like, I don't fucking know. There are so many options that you know, our parents or our grandparents didn't have, there was like four directions you could right. go. At, at, when you were like born after the Second World War or shortly before or in between you, like the generation before us, you usually just either did the stuff that your, your parents, parents did. did, took over a business or or learned something in that field or took or a learned, job. like a trade or something. Right, you know? learned something that was actually needed in society at, during mm-hmm. that time so and nowadays you have multiple options outside of school and then you have like university and other schools that 
can teach you more in various fields. And, you know, all the online influencer and all that shit, like a lot of, I know that a lot of kids say, I want to be a streamer, I want to be a YouTuber and stuff like that, which I'm not belittling or anything. I think it's a, it's, if you want to do that, that's good for you. It's a lot of hard work and dedication. Yeah. That's like saying you want to be a famous musician. It's right. a great thing to aspire to, but in these times, it's not necessarily easy anymore to become that because there are so many of them. Right. So that's the, that's, I think that's another thing where, um, it's not the worst to have a fail safe. It's not the mm -hmm. worst to have something in your back pocket that you can fall back to if something doesn't work out, uh, right away. I believe that everything can, um, work out. And, and if you're dedicated enough and if you put the time in and the, and you don't, you know, let yourself, um, get frustrated by the setbacks then you will probably end up where you want to be. Mm. But yeah, um, I just want to go back in time a little bit uh, to to talk about how I found the thing I wanted to do. Um, because I remember it started after my after middle school, essentially. You know, after elementary school, you don't think about that shit anyways because you're way too young and then you start middle school. Um, um in in austria or in like in a german speaking region it's called gymnasium or uh, hauptschule now it's called uh mittelschule i think it's also called mm -hmm. mittelschule now neue mittelschule so it's essentially the same name now in german um and then after those four years of middle school um you know Par parents and also teachers asked you hey what what do you want to do what are you interested that in that soon not in terms of job but in terms of uh direction because uh, technically yeah, because you, either isn't it here where you can go to quote high school or you can do yeah. a lehre so you, you can like yeah, exactly learn on the job somewhere else right so middle school that's the the school age that you re legally required to get to and after that technically you can drop out of school and uh, high get school's the, only three years here then right four so you have four of middle school and four of high school. Mm -hmm. Eight total of that, yeah. So elementary school is less than we have. Four. Case. Because it's the same, yeah, then it's less. We have five. Okay. Um, I mean, I had five years of elementary school because I was too young to, I mean, that's what my parents said. I was Yeah, I mean, elementary so school can be longer than five. If you do kindergarten and stuff there, then it's six years. Nah, that was not the reason I was born so late. And I would have been, I would have basically been almost a year younger than most of my other pupils in, in the, I so yeah. i had to I had to do like pre-elementary school mm -hmm. it's not skin it's not kindergarten anymore but it's like a preschool where you already learned a little bit we call that preschool oh, okay yeah <laughs> usually they put in the kids that are a little dumb and so <laughs> no nah, I'm, <kidding. laughs> I'm kidding um but so I, at 14 essentially i was like okay what do you want to do and i i or i hated school at that point me too i was not really good and I thought about doing like Lehre or something. It's basically in English, like an apprenticeship, I guess, where you learn yeah, on the job. Yeah, right. It's three years, usually, sometimes a little more uh, of working and then a couple of months of school. So you basically work a couple of months and then you have a couple of months of school and it's intertwined because you only learn the things in school that you really need at the job. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a cool system and afterwards usually you can do like the matura or like the what is it called uh, your high school diploma. certificate mm -hmm. yeah your diploma you can get still at the end of that um, which allows you in austria and germany to study so if you do the apprenticeship route you don't have to and then say you don't want to do that job when you're done with it yeah or you do it for a little while yeah. and still don't and then don't want to do it yeah. anymore you don't need to go back to to high school or take any special course you already have the diploma N not not with every not with every other okay there are some that offer that but not everybody not that's everyone. also kind of like a, i mean I, I kind of like the system but i wish it that kids would be a little bit older before they implement that because already at the end of high school in the u.s you're 17 18 years old and I do that think that feels too early to me to decide what what am I going to do with my life. That's so soon to I figure that out. I do think though that kids uh, and younger generations in general are way more grown up at that phase already, and think are 
not necessarily know exactly what they want to do, but the direction they want to go. Yeah, but it's a big decision the for a small uh, oh, it is. person to it make is. because you have to not only think about, do I want to do school or do I want to do the apprenticeship? But you also have to think about if the apprenticeship doesn't work out, if I don't like it after you, you know, go I'm back done, to school. then I have to go back to school. Yeah. Or you do something else. I I think also the mindset of I we got that a little bit still when I grew up that you do one job the, your whole life. Mm. But during my growing up and during my end, like the start of university and stuff, that mindset completely shifted. And now it's not like okay, you stay with one job forever or with one company. You change. You you know you mm. do so, you do different stuff. You maybe switch companies. You maybe switch jobs and stuff like that. So I think that alone uh, takes away the pressure of finding something that you're stuck with your whole life. Because that's what what it was for me. That's mm-hmm. when my parents asked me, hey, what do you want to do with your life? It's like, that's the wrong question. It's more the question, what are you interested in? What, what do you think you yeah. would like to do? That can change and yeah. that will change eventually and it should change. Yeah, I think the better question is, what are you interested in right now? What, yeah. what, what makes you excited right yeah. now? Yeah. Because those Porn. are the things that you should... <laughs> Porn <laughs> makes my my pants excited. <laughs> it's the pattern of the pants. Pleats. <laughs> you have a massive erection. Oh, oh that, that's that's the pattern of pants. <laughs> Nothing to see here, folks. <laughs> Don't act like you're not impressed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh yeah so back to my story yes uh so i was 14 i was like okay do i want to do like a lehre or and i found technically something at media media markt that would have been like because i was interested in tech technology and stuff like i love technology mm-hmm. <laughs> no and <laughs> i'm not gonna sing it <laughs> and so i was like okay that's something i would do but then i don't know i think my, my mom or my parents uh and also my sister kind of convinced me to stay in school. So I stayed there mm-hmm. and just did more like I, my, my sister did more like the like the shit cooking shit, like a cooking class and stuff. And then more languages. Mm-hmm. And I was more I went more into the direction of in, informatics. Do you get to choose what you study in high school? I mean, yes and no. Some some schools, some high schools have like two or three little branches uh-huh. that specializes in certain things. Oh, that's just how it should be. But not really, though, because you still have to take four years of, of biology and shit like that if it doesn't, yeah. even if it doesn't, uh, you know. Yeah, the thing is, I, I don't disagree with the, in high school. I th- think it's a good thing to have all of the different subjects. But I also think if you don't excel in those subjects, you shouldn't be forced to retake them like you are in the US. It should just be, okay, this is clearly not something that this student wants to do. They're yeah, not interested in it. They don't a, have the, you know, it's not. That's it, never to debate. You have to take them. Yeah, I know. It's part of it, the whole, uh, critic, what is it called? Curriculum. Curriculum. Um, and it's the crazy thing is it's just four years of those things where it's four years of physics. Like, I mean. You had to take four years of I physics? Had, I think I had eight years of physics We were only school. required to take one year of physics. Yeah, I had eight years of physics. Learn eight years of physics. It's almost, I, I don't recall anything almost. And the same with biology. It's a, a chemistry. I, ha- I have no I feel like I would excel in biology now. But I hated it when I was in high school. And physics, I also, I, I took physics and I did decent in it. And then I took AP physics, which is like a college mm-hmm. level physics class. I took yeah. that in my high school years, which I don't know why. It was stupid. I hated it. Um, but I did that too. But I wish that I can There are some classes like now as an adult, I wish I could go back and like take them again. I yeah. I have that feeling. I would love to take a biology class. The thing is, I, I talked to, who did I talk to the other day where you... I think oh, I was with Andy. You, you at sc- at high school and school in general, you have almost no um, real responsibilities. You just study maybe an hour or two a day, and that's it. And you get you usually get better grades. And I just oh, didn't that do that. That was not the case in the U.S. Yeah, but here it is. Mm. Is like that essentially. Yeah, and you do your homework, and that's it. You know, you don't have to do and maybe study a little harder if there's like a test coming up or like a, a schulabed, basically like a like a a bigger exam mm-hmm. but that's it so and and usually the boys they're more lazy ones they don't really interested in it or most of them and some of them are obviously and and the crazy thing to me is that that's what you said that uh, pupils are still forced to take 
classes multiple years even yeah. though they're not remotely interested in i think you it's can't... good to to require a year of it sure and then allow I, the student to decide hey do you like this do you want to continue sure. or do you not like it and we and find you something else. i think it's also important to know at least some aspects of yeah, it like I for agree. example if you take biology okay you should at least know how the human body works to an extent mm -hmm. uh, sexual sexual class and stuff like that you know that falls at least here that falls sex into education yeah, but that's not really, i mean it's a little biology that fa fell into biology here you did that in biology we yeah. had an extra class for that no we, we did not sex education yeah, I mean, that that's how it should be, but we had that in biology. So stuff like that should be obviously uh, taught to everybody. But other than that, I think it's it's ridiculous to make them go into it. But I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, that's it. That could be another topic. Yeah, the school I could systems. talk about the school system for a long time. Um, so I, so I decided to stay in school and um, I had no fucking clue what, why and so even though i wanted at the fun thing is i wanted to change schools mm -hmm. to an, a school oh thunder um that is more uh um was more directed towards programming and stuff like that um but i couldn't make the list i was like the first on the waiting list but nobody dropped out so i couldn't make it mm. which actually was a good thing so i stayed in my school um so i stayed the school that had the middle school also has the high school mm -hmm. And so I was there for another four years. And that's actually when I started to thinking about what what I want to do with my life. Mm -hmm. Because I was older, I was like 17, 18, uh, and the school year was ending the last my last year. And I was like, okay, what do I want to do? And in Austria, you are required to take either um, by law six months of military training. As a male. As a male, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and or um which is just also or. backwards <laughs> and, uh just or uh the yeah it comes from the second world war yeah i know but how fucking long is that <laughs> yeah i people are are trying to to change that but yeah, it's it's still not change but the 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 better aspect of the whole thing is like 12 month off or it's nine i think I, it's either nine or 12 month off social oh, service yeah. mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's nine months. It's not. It's not a full year. Um, so it's a social service year where you go into like a social uh, field, either like uh, an elderly home or at a, a hospital or being uh, an ER and stuff like that. Cool. Um, not being an ER, but you know, doing basic training and then helping. Mm -hmm um and that's what i did and i had so i had a nine month period where i was thinking about what i want to do and i was still not quite there you know i enjoyed my life enjoying getting paid even though way too little for what i did mm -hmm. um and my sister basically had didn't like women don't have to do it here so they had they you usually, don't even have to choose between a social year or something else There's no just women nothing you have no, to choose no. between <laughs> women can basically decide to do a social year okay obviously it's it's they can <laughs> and some do but yeah women usually then have like a year uh they're a year ahead so if they're going to study mm -hmm. they're a year ahead of you and they start uh that's so weird they're done sooner which in ret it which makes up because they don't make that much money so they have a year ahead to make much more money you know that's not true i'm just mm. it's it's complete bullshit but um that's how it is so i i'm trying to cut it short here uh <laughs> And after that, I was like, fuck, what do I do? And I was still not, I still was not really sure. I was like 19, no, I was 20. Mm -hmm. At that point, 1920, I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to work a little bit to make some money and then trying to figure out what to do, mm -hmm. which I did. I started working and that had my accidents. I talked about that on the podcast. If you have not heard it yet, I think it's one of the- It's one of the earlier episodes. Earlier, I think 20 something. In like Translating Love, yeah. Translating Love, yeah. Um, and then I started studying psychology because my sister did it. And also I was always interested in psychology. I loved it in school. And um, I don't know, there's just something very cool about understanding how the human mind works mm -hmm. and how you can r manipulate it basically. Um, but it didn't really work out because it was like a... a I don't know what to say, like a, a fian studium. It was not like in like person. Distance, that, like distance, distance learning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's when it really started. That's when I was really like, okay, what do I want to do with my life? And the fun thing is I, I knew it for years. Mm. So the first camera I got 
was uh, when I was like, I don't know, I bought my first camera when I was 16 or 15. Mm -hmm. I was always very interested in in movies and stuff. I had I started um, collecting movies. I started with VHS. I, I recorded almost every movie that I found uh, on, on like TV. Mm -hmm. Um, and with DVDs, I started collecting DVDs very early when I made some money. And at that point, you know, I've never thought like that could be something that, first of all, in Austria and second of making money with that thing. Mm -hmm. And the sad thing, I still don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't, but, um, I'm going towards there. At least that's what I'm talking. That's what I'm telling myself. <laughs> you are. Hey, yeah. But that's basically what brought me to to a uh, university that taught at least some basics of technology of programming but then again also of video audio recording all that stuff which in my opinion you don't all need that uh, you can totally start without knowing anything about that stuff and just uh, using a camera day by day and and learn that and probably get way better in during that three for five years depending what what you do mm -hmm. um yeah but that's what i did and that's when i i really saw doing something that you really really like and love makes a huge difference and then sure i mean it's the same when you go to the university with every other class or every other subject you usually have some classes that are not super that are necessary yeah. for the whole part, but that are not super interesting mm -hmm. in its in itself, like math or physics and stuff like that. I had to do that again, but there were only the aspects that I really needed for all that stuff, um, which made it, made it bearable and way more fun mm -hmm. in the end. And yeah, I don't know. I, I in retrospect or in 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 hindsight, hindsight, yeah, in hindsight, but. The, I think the biggest problem for me was, first of all, my pa my parents supported me. My parents never said, you can't do that or that's a, that's a stupid idea or something. Mm. But they also never really pushed me towards the things I really liked. For example, with the movies, they never pushed me towards that. They mm -hmm. never uh, supported me enough in that sense that I I fully understood early that that, was, that could be a profession. Which Maybe they also didn't see that as a possibility I, of being a profession. Yeah, I get that because they're not, I'm not saying that they're not in the creative field. Like they're not super involved in the creative field, even though I mean, my dad is a photographer. Are, yeah, I mean, yeah, I would say your dad's a creative type because he also no, even he with is, like building stuff. He's a no, he he's is creative. Tischler, what is it in, in English? A woodworker. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. He is creative. I'm not. That's why I'm saying it's. I don't want to say that they're not creative, but I think they didn't really have the. I don't know. The that the problem is they they. I was not the typical kid in the sense of, you know, I did all the after school things. I went to, you know, music class and stuff like that. I had like, a, I was part of a club or something. I didn't do that shit. I was mm -hmm. never really interested in shit. I had, a, I had a good amount of friends and I knew pretty early what I wanted, what, what, what I really liked. Mm -hmm. And that was movies. That was the, every aspect of making a movie and, and watching movies and enjoying stories and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And I think a big reason why I had a trouble finding it so long was because my parents really didn't um, push me towards that more. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm not saying that's the fault, I'm not saying that, but I think they, as you said, I think they didn't really have the, the. I they don't know. saw it more as a hobby and not as a, right. a career possibility. Right. Yeah. 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 I don't know. The thing is, I I think, and I tell it everybody who is thinking about, you know, either being self-employed or trying to make money with something with enough, um, um, don't have self-doubt with enough self-courage and self-belief, you can basically make any, anything to money. And I, I believe that wholeheartedly because I've seen it multiple times. Um, I'm not saying that you can be rich with everything, but I think you can make a living with everything you want to do mm -hmm. if you set your your heart and your your passion towards the whole thing. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. Uh, again, you can do anything. That's my that's my thing. I'm not saying it makes it easier, but especially if you're younger and you have no clue what to do, I think you already know what you really like to do. And I think making that 
passion into your day job into your you know um uh could be a it's a game changer it's so much better to work to do something that you really like to do mm -hmm. um than working a i don't know nine to five job doing something that you hate doing every day yeah. and i've been there i've done that and it's horrible because you're just wasting your time and you just basically wait for the next free day for the next weekend or whatever you know mm -hmm. yeah how is it with you <laughs> You talked a long time. I talked a long time. Sorry. Um, you know, it's interesting that you said, because my whole thing going into this was like my advice for people was going to be go back to your childhood, like think back to your childhood and things that you that brought you the most joy or things that you did, like funny things that you did as a kid that yeah. I'll get to why. But it's funny that you said that it went back to when you got your first camera when you were like 11 or 12. Mm -hmm. Or what I don't remember what age you said, but I think you said eleven or twelve. Yeah, and because that's kind of the same for me, where I I'm the type of person I am definitely a creative type, um, and because of that, there were so many things I wanted to do. I have so many interests and so many hobbies and so many things that I'm like. I could do this. You know, like I just want to try new things. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really excited about trying new things. She does, and then all of a sudden there's like a an elephant training set at home. She's like, I'm going to be an elephant trainer. And I'm <laughs> oh, like, I'd we don't it. even have elephants here. It's like, I would a, love it. It's I fine. I'm it. going to find one. I'd do it. Um, but so you know, for me as like as like a kid, even I was I was always wanting to try new things and always coming up with new ideas and new games and you know just things that I want to do, and. I hated school, hated it almost the whole time I was in school. Um, I enjoyed elementary school, but basically once I got to middle school all the way through high school, so those seven years, I hated it. Um, the only thing I enjoyed about school was uh, band because I love music. So I, everything that involved music, I was into it. I eventually enjoyed math, like algebra and stuff, but that wasn't until my last two years of mm -hmm. high school when yeah. I had the right teacher. Um. I didn't really like any other class. I just wasn't, I just didn't like school. We should totally do a, an episode yeah, about school. We should. Yeah. Um, but, and I didn't excel in school. I did okay, but I didn't I can excel see that. in school. <laughs> the thing is, I really don't, I, I used to think it was my intelligence. I used to think that I wasn't smart enough, and that's why I did so poorly in school. But I think I just wasn't being, first of all, I wasn't being taught the things that I wanted to be taught. And I wasn't being taught in the way that I learn because I think creative types learn differently than yeah, non-creative types. I agree. And also, uh, that's what I said. If you really like, uh, if you really like what you're hearing and doing, mm -hmm. like the subjects, then you—that's not learning. It's it's basically you soaking it up because you're so interested in yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. But um, so yeah. Anyways, after high school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I decided to go to school for early education to be a teacher ironically <laughs> i didn't like school but i wanted to be a teacher that's funny because a lot of people who didn't really know here what to do that everybody did that. defaults and, to teacher and so many people are teachers right now yeah and that's because they had no clue what to do else it's so interesting i mean there are some it's not to to put the profession down because no, it's no, so it's important not. it is important um and when you have a good teacher it makes all the difference but that's the thing if you choose to be a teacher because you want to be a teacher, you're yeah. a better teacher. Yeah. I'm not saying that the people who are, don't know what to do or becoming teacher are not good teachers, but I'm saying choosing the profession because you want to be that mm -hmm. over, oh, I don't know what I want to do. I'll just be that is much better. Well, and it goes back for me like to my passions as a kid. I always I loved kids. I've always loved kids. Even when I was a kid, I loved kids. Really? <laughs> And I just, I always wanted to be around kids. I always wanted to be around babies. And I started babysitting really young. And I, I was doing that stuff from when I was like nine years old. I was babysitting like the next door neighbor's kid, you know. So I was a kid myself. And so that was something for me that I was like, I could, I want to do something with kids. That was the only thing I could really like say for certain. That's what I want to do. So I was like, okay, I'll go into teaching. My dad was a teacher. Kind of made sense. <laughs> and then I start going to school <laughs> and surprise, surprise, someone who doesn't uh, like school. Um, while I was in the US when you, 
when you want to be, for example, an elementary yeah. school teacher, you probably don't have to have the high classes or the higher school things. What do you mean? Yep. Yeah, here, for example, if you want to do, if you want to be like a, a teacher of like a, a high school, or high school or something, you have to study. You have to have a. I think nowadays you have to, you have to have a master's degree. You have to study too. You have to have a bachelor's. Yeah, uh, for for elementary. Elementary. Yeah, that's here too. But the elementary bachelor's is 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 super easy apparently. Well, okay, this it's is the thing. But this is the thing in the stuff. U.S. that's so ass backwards. Um, is that when you start at university, it feels like high school. So you still have to take yeah, math. Yeah. You still have to take English. You mm. still have to like all of these prerequisites that s typically take a year to get through. Ooh, there's a storm coming. Um, so it's a year of studying yeah. before you even get to we, any of the classes we, that have anything to do with your profession. We should really do a podcast. Yeah, we should. It's really backwards. Let's so, try to. Yeah. Anyways, so... I started studying for early education and one of my prerequisites was geology and I'm not kidding you, geology. So the study of rocks and sand and dirt. And I'm like, why the fuck am I taking this? I had a really creepy professor. He was taking pictures of the girls in the class. It was super creepy. We, It was bad. And at some point I was like, why the fuck am I doing this? Like none of this is interesting to me. None of the classes I'm taking are interesting. It's fucking expensive. It's not worth it. And so I switched to psychology mm -hmm. because I, I was like, okay, what about child psychology? That's something still working with children. Um, I've always been interested in the human mind, how it works. So I'll go that route. So I started doing that. But again, lots of prerequisites was getting through them. But at least I got to start. I took a lot of the prerequisites already mm -hmm. um, in the early education. And so I started with some of the psychology stuff. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Then I hit a pretty bad uh spout or what do you call it a bout of depression uh a really bad time in my life um was really really depressed did not know i was depressed i didn't like have a label for it but so much so that i stopped going to school i was skipping classes i was doing really bad on my exam uh, exams and my school kicked me out for a year or a mm -hmm. semester not a year a semester they said you're not doing well they sent me a letter and said you have to take the next semester off and we can reevaluate in you know six months <laughs> i did not tell my mom <laughs> and for about i want to say two or three months i was acting like i was going to school mm -hmm. because i was so ashamed and she found out some other way because of the finance aspect of the school she found out another way um that i had been <laughs> kicked out mm -hmm. and at that point i was just so lost in my life and this was almost exactly 11 years to the day because i saw a facebook memory today okay and when I was able to go back to school, I was like, okay, let's switch directions <laughs> and try out for the dance department. <laughs> yeah, but you eventually ended up in... Yeah, you wait, I get to that. I yeah. get to that. You don't give me the the move it along. I knew you were going to do that. You talked for <laughs> no, like 30 but minutes. That's so that's so much good stuff. I want to put that into school. Yeah, but thing. I'm, I know, but I'm just briefly, I'm just briefly okay. going to go into yeah. that. So I have no dance experience decided. I like to dance, so I'm going to try out for the dance department. Of course, did not get into the dance department. So then even more lost, I was like, okay, what do I like doing? I like to cook. I'm sorry, people. It's taking a long time. Wait up. <laughs> I'm kidding. I know. You stress me out. You should let me tell stories first, and then you can tell your story I so I can tell you to hurry up. <laughs> you stress me out. But yeah, talk about this, the, 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 the cooking thing. Yeah, I was about to. Because that's an interesting thing, but talk about it. So I, because I was so lost and I didn't know what to do, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to, I was working three jobs uh, because you can't afford school otherwise. So I was working three jobs and studying full time. And... I was like, okay, I'm just going to try culinary school because it's a trade school. It's not super hard to get into. Um, it's close to one of my jobs, so I can easily get to work. And I loved cooking. I was always cooking. And my grandma, it always was like a thing with me and my grandma. We loved to cook together. And I knew I didn't want to be a chef. I knew that I wasn't going to finish culinary school because it's two years. The first year is focused on the cooking part. The second year is focused on... Uh, getting a career as a chef, basically. So I knew I wasn't going to finish, but I just needed to do something for myself. And so I did that. I loved the year that I was there. I excelled. It was the first time so I excelled in that's school. That's an interesting aspect because you knew you don't want to 
be a chef, yeah. but you sold it to school just yeah. for the heck of it. Yeah. And that's kind of cool because that's what I said earlier. You don't have to necessarily know mm. what you want to be, but you can still learn something and maybe find with that something else or yeah. you, your true calling again. Yeah. And after that year, I, it's so funny because I literally did better in school than I'd ever done in my life. I got straight A's. I made the Dean's list. I had almost a 4.0. Uh, it just goes to show that when you really do something that you love, um, you excel in it. And after that year, when I had already decided I wasn't going to go back, I was working in like a spice house. So it kind of fit along with, with what I was studying. And then I decided, okay, I'm just going to work as a nanny for a while because I, I still love kids. I want to do something with kids. And I was working in childcare already as one of my jobs. And so I decided let's make it more of like a private thing. And I work with one family and see how that goes. And I ended up working as a full-time nanny for a total of five years, I think, with three different families. Not at the same time, but three different families um, before I moved to Portland. And then I worked again for a year in Portland as a nanny. But I, I kind of thought that that was going to be my the rest of my life. Like I, I, I could see myself being a nanny forever, essentially. But you get to a point as a, a nanny, nanny McPhee or a nanny like Mary Poppins. I was fucking Mary Poppins. I was like super nanny. So the spoonful of sugar. Yeah. You gave everybody a spoonful of I sugar. I gave every kid lots of medicine so they'd sleep all day. Like how? Uh, <laughs> it's like my kid has diabetes. How is that possible? And you're like, I don't know. I don't know. No, I was a fucking awesome nanny. Um, and, it, but you get to a point, especially as a young person who's a nanny, and if you want your own children, you get to a point where you kind of want the next kids that you spend that much time with to be your own. Either that or, um, I, and I've seen it with a lot of younger people who work at a kindergarten, they see how fucked up kids can be because of the parents and they're like, okay, I don't want to have kids. Yeah, but I think it's a slightly different experience when you are only working with yeah, family. Yeah, sure, sure. So you but always have sure, the same kids. Sure. And, you know, I was working 45 hours a week. And so I was seeing the kids more than the parents saw the kids because I was working with really young kids. And, you know, it, it is really hard because you get so attached and you get attached not only to the kids but to the family. It's really hard to when you have to change families. And that also takes a toll. So I was kind of done with that after yeah, I get that. five years i get that and i don't think that's i mean i i salute everybody who does that for a long time but i don't think it's i think it's a better job doing it like 10 or 15 hours um yeah because then maybe there's a not or you do multiple families but just at nights for example when they go out and stuff yeah. like that yeah but i i absolutely loved it it was my favorite job that i've ever done until now um but then I kind of started to evaluate, you know, I came, I came to Austria then shortly after my last family and I was an au pair. So it kind of fit along the same lines a little bit, had some not so great experiences. I think we've talked about that too. Um, and then I started thinking, what do I, what do I want to do? I, I want to obviously work here in some way that is meaningful to me. And I just like randomly, it came into my head massage and I was like, why? People, why not did, the dirty massage. Don't think Why like did that. massage pop into my head? And this is where it goes back to what I was saying about, think about what things you did as a kid that you enjoyed. You liked to get massaged as a kid? I gave massages as a kid to my family, to my mom, to my dad, and my brother. And I would, mostly my mom, but it was to the point where I was like maybe 11, 12, 13, around then, where I had a sign on my door, like on my bedroom door, with different types of massage that I offer and how much they cost. <laughs> my mom would pay me. Like, I would make my mother pay me to give her a massage. And it was like this whole little business I had at this young age. And I, when I thought about that, I was like, you know, it's... So ridiculous. It, you, it is ridiculous, you but... You live there and they give you probably an allowance and they feed you. I and don't think we got an allowance. Yeah, still, but they paid for your shit and you were like, yeah, if I give you a massage, I still want a, pu a buck or two. <laughs> oh, I was I was not cheap. Um, but I, would, I just kind of thought of that and found it kind of sweet that I, that I loved doing that so much as a kid. And... Then I thought again, when I was working in childcare, I was working at a, before I was in any, I was working at a, a fitness center 
and just like in the the kids clubhouse so like where the parents could drop their kids off and go work out for a few hours and they also had massage there they offered it at the fitness center and one of the women i worked with was also she was working in the child center but also working as a massage therapist Mm -hmm. and it always fascinated me i'm like that sounds awesome and it was something that was always in the back of my head but i never thought i could make a career out of it for some reason it just never clicked for me like that could be a career and because every massage therapist is also doing something else oh Don't do that. I mean, in the US, it's a stereotype. I'm not saying that's how it is, but it's it's a stereotype. Yeah, but especially not all stereotype. No, I, I, I totally agree. But if you look at movies and shows, if there is a sure. massage parlor, it's most sure. of the time an Asian family owning the massage place, and then next to the massage place, there's a dry cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's, it's true. It's nuts. But so I kind of just went back to that and I was like, you know, that actually seems like something that's plausible for me. That seems like something I, I'm interested in the human body that went back to my psychology days. I It doesn't tie in with the whole kid thing, but I, I knew that I wanted to start my own family. And so that was something for me that didn't bother me if I wasn't working with kids because I knew I would have my own family. And uh, yeah, I, I just kind of jumped in then. And that's when I started studying massage here and did that. That took a year to to finish. And now I'm working as a massage therapist for over four years. And I love it. Like I, I there is, with the exception of, of my boss, um, I love going to work. Um, I, I, there's not really been a single day where I've been like, I really don't want to go to work today. And I, I just love it. I love my mm. patients. I love what I do. Um, I'm constantly con like continuously looking into like new techniques and like trying to find, you know, or trying to think of new ways that I can massage or think of new ways that I can like kind of switch it up. And, and I'm fascinated by it still. So I, I, it just goes back to like my whole advice for people who might feel lost or might feel like, I don't know what I want to do with my life. First of all, you don't need to know what you want to do with your life. I probably won't be a massage therapist forever. Maybe maybe I take a course on how to be a dog trainer and then I'm a dog trainer because that's also something I would love to do. But at this stage in my life, I'm happy where I am and, and I enjoy it. And I think that's what's important. So you just think back to being a kid or being a teenager and what do you want to do? Like what what interested you at that stage in your life, what was so exciting for you then? And maybe there is something to that. I think it's not only about uh, the childhood aspect, but it's also you can have a super cool hobby or something you really like doing at, at your stage in your life right mm -hmm. now that you maybe can turn into a profession. For example, I mean, again, going back to streaming and, and being a YouTuber and stuff like that. Um, Sure, it, it might sound a little ridiculous if you tell your parents or they think you sound ridiculous, let's put it like that, when you tell them, hey, I want to be a streamer or something. Um, but, um, you know, that's something that can, you can build. Um, mm -hmm. You get a shitty job that brings in the money um, and you work as, you do your work as a streamer and, and with stuff like that, it's the same with music, uh, video business, all of that stuff. You know, you won't be successful from one day to the other. It's, it just takes a, a while. Same with that podcast, by the way. We're doing that now for how many years? Over two. Isn't it been three years now? No. Really? Oh, well, maybe it has been almost three. I, I think it has been over three years now. In February, it was three years. Oh, uh, yeah. Because we started 2020. Yeah. So we're doing that over three years now and we're not massive. We're not even close to being super successful with the podcast. But and granted, we have to add to that 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 was never really our goal. Sure, sure. So had it been our goal, we might have done a couple of things differently to try to like make it bigger, faster. But yeah, sure. The thing is you with that stuff, especially with advertisement stuff like that, you also have to put in a little money with yeah. that stuff to get more out of it. But yeah, uh, yeah. So I think kind of going back to what I said, you can do anything you really want to do. And I think yeah. with every hobby, there might be a profession somehow uh, connected to that. 
And not everything that you want to do now, it doesn't mean that you have to do that forever. Right. Not, nothing has to be forever. You can change your mind in two years. You can change your mind in five years. You can change your mind in 20 years. Also, it's- maybe AI is taking away a job soon, so <laughs> you never know. But I, I just think it's important to live more in the moment. And if that means to not have, you don't have to have such like absolutes in your life. It doesn't have to be like, this is definitively my job for the rest of my life because you're not stuck there. No one's forcing you to stay right, there. Right. Um, just do something that brings you joy and that makes you happy. And it makes life so much more enjoyable to not have to like have this nine to five that you hate all right. the time. And, you know, it's to pay, you know, got to pay the bills. You know, people always say that where it's like, got to pay the bills. Yeah, but sure. But that doesn't mean you have to be miserable. Right. And you can always start something else again. You can start with something else uh, next to your job. And maybe at some point, you know, it yeah. will pay pay some bills. Maybe you will make money out of it pretty fast. And all of a sudden you don't rely on a job that is just uh, weighing you down and, and forcing you to do something that you don't want to do. So with that, uh, please consider subscribing to the podcast and um, hit us up I on our your Insta- half was longer than my half. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um <laughs> Actually, I think it was actually almost the same, seeing what the time is now. Um, and oh, now you sound completely... <laughs> consider uh, hitting us up on our Instagram. We post stuff there. We like to talk to you there. Um, and yeah, if you want to really support us, you can head over to our Patreon, where Joe is uh, waiting Hello, for Joe. more Patreons. And you can support us there, which helps us the most. And yeah, obviously sharing and uh, liking and subscribing to the podcast is always appreciated. Indeed. That's it. Watch out for deer.